Okay, I'm officially bored. How's it going? My name is Carl Mullen and some of you might have watched yesterday's video. Um, I am essentially taking a look at what's involved in putting yourself into self-isolation and I'm following the HSE guidelines on how to do so. Now just to be absolutely clear, I'm not sick at the moment. I'm doing this just to try and see what's involved and to try and give it as accurate a representation as possible. So yesterday was my first day of this and it started out with me just going onto the HSE website and seeing what are the guidelines for putting yourself into self-isolation. Okay, so one of the things that I mentioned on yesterday's video was that today I was gonna get a little bit more into the cleaning element of self-isolation. That has become very apparent. Cleaning is key. That's why staying in one room kind of makes your life easier because you just have to do less cleaning. You're gonna to have to, you know, access different rooms at certain stages, but that just means that you're going to have to clean up after yourself. My girlfriend, Ash, she's gone to work now. I was the last person to use the bathroom last night. I deep cleaned it after I used it and then she was able to use it this morning. Now that she's gone to work, I can use the bathroom and I wanna get in and maximize my time in there. So I wanna get in, I want to shower, I want to shave, I want to do other things. And then afterwards, I'm going to have to deep clean the bathroom. So first of all, to use the bathroom, then to deep clean it. Let's do it. Okay, so shower, done. Now, if this was a real world situation, this towel, I'd have to put it in with my bag of other laundry. And if I was diagnosed with having coronavirus, I would be told what to do with that bag. Also, in the interest of just minimizing my trace around the place, I used a separate shampoo bottle, and I'm also going to be throwing that in the bin. Um, now though, it's time for me to deep clean the bathroom and to deep clean this room. Another point to note that again, if this was a real world situation, I would have been sent a kit from the HSE, which would include an apron, a face mask, and disposable gloves. But for the purposes of this exercise, I'm just gonna do a deep clean. Right. Deep clean sequence, starting now. Cue the music. It's thought that the virus can last on surfaces for anything from two hours to nine days. So clean all surfaces as usual, then follow up with disinfectant, which should do the job in about a minute. Right, so that's the deep clean of the bathroom done and the bedroom done, apart from one bit from yesterday, which was my dishes from dinner last night. I gave the dishes a rinse in the room here. There's a sink in the room, old house, don't ask. So I gave them a rinse, but I didn't want to go down to the kitchen last night because it would have required me doing a full deep clean of the kitchen. So I just kind of thought to myself, right, well, it makes more sense if I really limit my movements to within this room. And then tomorrow, when I do have to go down to the kitchen, then I can deep clean it, and that can be like my one trip to the kitchen for the day. Bring down the dishes, put them in the dishwasher, deep clean the kitchen. All right, so deep clean of the bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen done. I've also washed my hands about 20 times. So it's lunchtime now. Now, here's the thing. Because this is an experiment, and I knew that I was going to be doing this, I could have been well prepared, and I could have made lunch and had it ready for myself. But I don't feel like that's going to be the situation for someone who actually ends up having to put themselves into isolation. Now, having cleaned the kitchen, I don't really fancy having to go down, prepare food, and then clean everything again. Now, yesterday, I got very excited at one of the parts of the HSE guidelines, which was, it's okay for friends, family, or delivery drivers to drop off food or supplies. So does that mean like, can I get like a pizza? So I think in the interest of this, I should probably get myself a pizza. So in the part where it says driver instructions, I'm gonna have to just say, please leave food outside the door. So according to the app, my pizza is on the way. Now, I could go downstairs into the living room and kind of keep an eye out the window, but then that requires a deep clean of the living room. So instead, I'm just at the top of the stairs and I'm pretty much just keeping an eye out for the outline of the pizza delivery man. All right, I think it's here. Yeah, that's him. It's here. Oh, good man, so he's left it in the porch. Just like... I'm just thinking, if any of the, um, any of the neighbors notice a delivery driver leaving a delivery in the porch and not ringing the doorbell, they might put two and two together and think that I'm actually self-isolating. Now, how does this work in terms of rubbish? So according to the guidelines, um, I have to have my own separate rubbish bin that I just throw all my waste into. And then when that's three quarters full, I need to tie it, put it into another waste bin. 
and then depending on how you're diagnosed, you'll be told what to do with the rubbish. So for the time being, I'm gonna put it into a little bag I have here in the room. Good evening. I'm actually gone alone in the house. My girlfriend Ash is staying out in her mom's tonight. I couldn't face cleaning the kitchen again. So I ended up just having the remainder of the pizza for dinner, which probably isn't to be recommended, but that and I uh, brought some snacks with me up to the room yesterday. So it's very glamorous. So this is my second day of this now. I'm definitely seeing that there's ways that you can make life easier on yourself. And that's by kind of limiting your movements around the house because it just gives you less stuff to clean. But I'm not gonna lie, it is getting hard to not have face-to-face -face contact with anyone. I mean, look, it would be a necessity in a situation like this, but it doesn't mean that it's not hard. I'm also conscious of the fact as well that like, if this was a real world situation, there's gonna be people doing this who they might not be feeling great, or they're gonna be worried, or they might have kids. Um, and of course, that's gonna make it tough too. But what I will say is, thank God for the phone, because that has been kind of my only contact with anyone. But in saying that, some some face-to-face -face contact would would be nice right now. I'll get a little bit more into like the boredom part of it and how you can cope with loneliness uh, tomorrow because the HSE does have guidelines on that as well. So um, we'll get into that on tomorrow's video. See you then.